I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, not a month goes by where I don't get a call at my institute by someone telling me that someone in the government implanted these things in their brain without them knowing. I'm not kidding. Now you may say, this doesn't concern me, or my children, or my community, but this is less and less true. The world is on a crash course with trying to turn humans into gods. Unprecedented developments of human cognitive abilities, refine artificial intelligences, and brain-computer interfaces simulate complex systems, create humanoid robots and cyborgs, and with the help of nanorobots, we may develop manageable matter. Find ways to transfer one's personality to an artificial carrier. This is an article from 10 years ago. The VOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. Your brain reality is your reality. And if in fact I can import information into that brain and take outputs from that brain and link that to an avatar so that brain thinks that it's embodied moving in the world and experiencing the world, can we do this? Yeah, we can do these kind of things. At the time of initial reports on the program, there were only 62 country-level simulations being run by the U.S. Department of Defense. These simulations grouped humans into composites, with 100 individuals acting as a single node. But already at that time, the U.S. Army had used the systems to create a one-to-one -one level simulation of potential Army recruits. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. The avatars and the nodes, when those are manipulated digitally in the simulation, it manifests physically in the human brain and the physical body. It is like pulling strings. It is like a puppet on a string. We are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons for the use of cognitive control or behavior control. And although it may not be that the sky is falling yet, folks, it looks like rain. Bring an umbrella. That said, what's going to rain down? This. Android robots to replace people in manufacturing tasks. Android robot servants for every home. Thought-controlled avatars to provide telepresence in any place of the world. There is a very real risk that you are going to become a full-blown, 24-7 targeted individual. So what happens is you get these nanoparticles that attach to our DNA. And when they do, they act as receivers. And this is going to be hooked up to the three-strand DNA computers they are building. And these are quantum computers and supercomputers such as the D-Wave system. And so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. And that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software. And it can be monitored and tracked in real time. So you know for a fact that these weapons that you worked on, they're being used domestically today? Absolutely. Uh, it seems to be more weapons research than medical research. Um, I've personally corresponded with upwards of 1,500 victims, all complaining of identical complaints from every state in the nation. They're being accused of being crazy. They're being accused of being paranoid and schizophrenic to completely cover up what is in fact a social engineering program and a covert research and development program for some of the most sophisticated and advanced technology that the world has ever seen. This whole conspiracy to enslave humanity is a psychological game. You're not going to sell a tyranny by telling people it's a tyranny. Today no war has been declared and however fierce the struggle may be, it may never be declared in the traditional fashion. Our way of life is under attack. While I was in the service, I found out that there is an ongoing 
non-consensual human experiment and it's testing a human machine interface weapon and it can all be done remotely it can be done simply by targeting you with the frequency locking into the resonant frequency of your dna and your mind and in that manner completely track and trace and control you uh, 24 hours a day this disturbing message is for the several million Americans and for anyone else who cares deeply about the future of their country and the planet Earth. The U.S. is in grave danger. Strangely, the peril is not from foreign enemies, but from enemies within. The United States and much of the Western world is ultimately controlled by an unelected, unaccountable cabal. Its apex is the banking and financial cartel, followed by the oil cartel, the CEOs of the largest and most powerful transnational corporations, major intelligence agencies, including the CIA, the FBI, and the NSA, and a major slice of the U.S. military. Their collective power and influence is incalculable. And it is their plan for the U.S. and the rest of us that is so alarming. The outcome is that they want to connect the human brain to artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence becomes human consciousness. The dimensions of its threat have loomed large on the horizon for many years. Whatever our hopes may be for the future, there is no escaping either the gravity or the totality of its challenge to our survival and to our security. A challenge that confronts us in unaccustomed ways in every sphere of human activity. The military, you know, they pioneered the internet, DARPA, and now they are pioneering uh, our interface to our brain. Are there citizens of this country that are being abused with this technology? Worse than abused, that's a light word. They're being tortured. And what people have to realize is that these targeted individuals are basically the test stage for rolling all of this madness out to all seven billion of us on this planet. And this is going to be done without our knowledge and that it's going to be through biological modifications that are being made to the human race. And that may sound pretty out of this world, folks, but it seems to be happening in the world right now, unbeknownst to the people. Everybody is being genetically altered. And with the advent of things such as the D-Wave computer system and the new quantum computers that they're building and the 5G grid, it's about to be taken to the next level. And what we are heading for is a surveillance system and a lockdown of unprecedented proportions. And this technology at that point will be used by automated computer, supercomputer software programming uh, that will manipulate the emotions and the behavior and the thoughts of everybody in the United States of America. And it can all be done remotely. It's very much like the, the microchip kind of uh, tracking the New World Order, this entire, you know, uh, control grid that's supposed to be rolled out against the American people someday. And I'm here to tell you that uh, it's already here. There isn't going to come a day where there's troops in the streets and tanks rolling down uh, your neighborhood and riot gear and all this stuff. We might have isolated incidents like that. It might get that like that every once in a while. But the, the true control grid is this technology, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior manipulation technology. And it can all be done remotely. It can be done simply by targeting you with the frequency, locking into the resonant frequency of your DNA and your mind, and in that manner, completely track and trace and control you uh, 24 hours a day. They call this the New World Order, which, ironically, is the same name Hitler used for the smaller empire he imagined. One sure thing, the new world order will end all pretense of government of, by, and for the people. It will be a dictatorship of, by, and for a small minority of the rich and privileged elite. Most of my friends, both American and Canadian, 
tend to agree that the world is in a state of crisis. But very few are aware that the problems are not natural phenomena. They have been engineered by a very tiny elite group of rich, ruthless and power hungry people who have been deliberately keeping the majority of decent, hard working taxpayers totally in the dark. The so-called black budget has never been shown to the public until now. Since 1996, the Pentagon has spent $8.5 trillion in taxpayer money that has never been accounted for. Every year, hundreds of billions of Pentagon dollars go missing, not because of fraud, waste, or abuse, but because U.S. military planners have appropriated it to secretly develop advanced weapons and fund clandestine operations. A shadowy government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, his own fundraising mechanism and the ability to pursue his own ideas of the national interest free from all checks and balances and free from the law itself. Senator Daniel Inouye is speaking about the Unacknowledged Special Access Programs, or USAPs, an entity that uses taxpayer dollars but is not beholden to domestic laws. Unacknowledged Special Access Programs are not to be confused with Special Access Programs that are acknowledged. Edward Snowden, for instance, disclosed, among other things, a program called PRISM. But PRISM was acknowledged, meaning the President, Congress, and key members of the intelligence community knew of its existence. USAPs, on the other hand are small top secret compartments whose very existence is not known by anyone outside the compartment. A Department of Defense manual describes USAP as follows, quote, unacknowledged SAPs require a significantly greater degree of protection than acknowledged SAPs. A SAP with protective controls that ensures the existence of the program is not acknowledged, affirmed, or made known to any person not authorized for such information. All aspects, technical, operational, logistical, are handled in an unacknowledged acknowledged manner, end quote. This means that no matter who it is, high-ranking official or otherwise, if one were to ask about such a program, one is authorized and required to deny its existence entirely. It is ironic that the U.S. should be fighting monstrously expensive wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, allegedly to bring democracy to those two countries when it itself can no longer legitimately claim to be called a democracy when trillions, and I mean thousands of billions of dollars have been spent on projects about which both the Congress and the Commander-in-Chief have been kept deliberately in the dark. And what kind of operations would require such monumental secrecy? So if you go all the way back to Norwood Wiener, the goal of creating artificial intelligence was for them to become gods, to, to create an all-seeing eye. And the cybernetics group really that basically dictated the, the, the direction for this uh, project was intertwined with the CIA. And what's interesting is out of the cybernetics group came two, two fundamental projects. So one was the creation of personal computer and the other one was MKUltra. Their goal is to create this global computer that sees all, sees everything, and where the humans evolved to create a collective mind. And according to Francis Hayline, because Francis Hayline says that uh, you know, religions have failed us, most ideologies have failed us, and the, the world is in chaos, and we now need something to unite us. And he said that if we can create this artificial intelligence and this global mind, uh, then humanity will finally have something to worship. of a net in terms of the probability that there will be a message from A to B in a given time period. We plot the net as a matrix. We put ones where there is a link and zeros where there is no direct link. stake was the unveiling of an entirely new paradigm, one which encompassed a holistic view of control that could potentially govern the world and the mind. The system they came up with required that individuals and society be placed in a common communications network. 
the eye of the beholder sees a strange new technology. It all centered around man-computer symbiosis. Would you advocate a world ruled by scientists and by the super brains? No. We are fit for discovering how the world works. We're not fit for telling other people what to do. Cybernetics was first described by Norbert Wiener as communication and control in the animal and the machine. We have contributed to the initiation of a new science which embraces technological developments with great possibilities for good and evil. This was especially so since the computing machine had already reached a point of such complexity that it threatened man's freedom to make individual decisions. We do not have a choice in suppressing these new technological developments. We can only hand it over to the world that exists about us. There are those who hope for the good of a better understanding of man and society that may anticipate and outweigh the incidental contribution we are making to the concentration of power. I am compelled to say that it is a very slight hope. Wiener, Rosenbluth, and Bigelow presented the ideas of their paper, Behavior, Teleology, and Purpose. It was written in 43, but couldn't be published until 1947 due to secrecy. They had a universal mechanism to create goal-seeking behavior that made machines and even people basically programmable and showed how the communication of neurons could be modeled by a digital computer. The mind, in contradistinction to brain and behavior, emerged in the 1950s as a legitimate object of experimental research. The Neural Nets project of McCullough and Pitts spearheaded this cognitivist turn in the 1940s. Science of mind thus became a science of signals based on binary logic. Neural nets bridge the gulf between body and mind, matter and form. The comparisons between the central nervous system as an electronic machine and the digital computer as an artificial brain boil down to questions of logic, mathematics, and the very nature of reality itself. Many of the cybernetics members were now talking literally about constructing an artificial matrix. Matrix is supposed to give birth, not receive. And yet what I want to talk about is very definitely the birth of a matrix. The matrix has been a growing thing, getting more and more complex, wider and wider in its scope, and, I believe, more and more fertile as time has gone on. And with the advent of things such as the D-Wave computer system and the new quantum computers that they're building and the 5G grid, it's about to be taken to the next level. And what we are heading for is a surveillance system and a lockdown of unprecedented proportions. The first generation wireless 1G was voice. The second generation 2G allowed both talk and text. The third generation, 3G, the internet in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. The internet will be replaced by brain net. It is called the sentient world simulation. The program's aim, according to its creator, is to be a continuously running, continually updated mirror model of the entire planet, complete with billions of nodes representing every person on the Earth. This was a white paper put out by Purdue University in 2006, and the Sentient World Simulation, SWS, went live in 2007, which represents every person on the planet within this computer matrix as a node and every node is given an avatar an identifier and that is real-time 24 7 monitoring of every person on the planet 
This is primarily, but not exclusively, facilitated by the adiabatic quantum computers produced by D-Wave Corporation. There will be a virtual version of your brain as far as data is concerned of what molecules, what chemicals, and whatever make up the actual physical brain, that data could be stored in the computer. What I am principally is not this material stuff, but a pattern of information. Well then, if the pattern is the essence, and if you copy the pattern to whatever level of precision you need, then that copy that has the exact same pattern should be me. At the time of initial reports on the program five years ago, there were only 62 country-level simulations being run by the U.S. Department of Defense. These simulations grouped humans into composites, with 100 individuals acting as a single node. But already at that time, the U.S. Army had used the systems to create a one-to-one -one level simulation of potential Army recruits. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. And of course they're being joined by Lawrence Livermore National Labs. They have, get this, high fidelity neural recordings. They're trying to do everything they can to map and to record your memory. It's not enough for them to record all of our metadata. Not enough for them to record all of our phone conversations as the former head of the NSA said. He said they want total population control. That's how you do it with these brain projects. Out of disclosure, some of the work that I'm doing here today is funded by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. I'm also funded by the European Union Human Brain Project, specifically the Subproject 12, where I'm a task leader for dual-use brain science. And I've also done some ongoing work with the Strategic Multi-Level Assessment Crew over the past 10 years at the Pentagon, at Dr. Kabayan's group, and with DARPA. The military agenda is interested on the potential weaponization and misuse of the brain sciences for nefarious agenda for political intelligence and military use. That's why the European Union and President Barack Obama want to spend a billion dollars, a billion dollars to map the brain. You see, once you map the brain, then you can begin to connect the mind to computers, telepathy, telekinesis, recording memories, uh, photographing dreams, things that you see right in the Hollywood movies will be able to perform. Note, this has not been directly addressed nor has it been entertained by any United States government entity in a public forum. What has gone from the drawing board to the reality is this the use of neural interfacing and physiological interfacing through the idea of remote controlled small scale systems to create a nano swarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes in wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, and they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. The idea here is to put minimal sized electrodes in a network within a brain through only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. Take a look. This is the front of my pen. This amount of nanomaterial, if be able to maintain and sustain with regard to its deliverability and aerosolization, could in fact affect all of you. The nanotechnology and the biotechnology filters down from the hydrosphere into the water supply and the food chain. And now every, every American, all 318 million Americans are, are infected. See, nano cells are real small, a thousand times smaller than these dust particulates. You inhale it, they go to work replicating, spreading like a virus, multiplying in exponentials. Six months time, I could have a hundred million people converted ditch diggers, porn stars, and presidents. Not one would be the wiser. A hundred million people who buy what I want them to buy and do pretty much damn well anything I figure they ought to do. Anything that the nanotech is in can be manipulated through this 5G system. And the nanotech is in everything. They spray the nanotech in the skies. They put nanotech in the food. Even with what we flush down through our drains in our own homes, it's passed on down through the water system, so you see this in the food chain, and this, they're nanotech in the food that we're eating, and nanotech in the stuff that we're washing down the drains, and of course it ends up in the river system, it ends up in the fish, ends up in the algae, ends up in everything. Um, 
the nanotechnology is in the bodies, uh, the brains of all 318 million Americans. Everyone's infected. They've been spraying the nanotechnology into the hydrosphere for the last 25 years, which filters down into the water supply and the food chain. Once ingested, the, mi the nanotech then migrates to the brain and adheres to the neurotransmitters of the victim's brain and begins to speak to and decode those neurotransmitters after it's activated. It can be activated, the nanotechnology, from thousands of miles away using a process called directed energy flashing photons. Okay, they illuminate the brain of the, uh, brain of the victim with photons that re read the return training signal. That's how the technology can be activated in a specific target's um, uh, brain. Okay, so while you know everyone is infected, not everyone's nanotech and everyone's brain is activated. There are the nanoparticles uh, that are already within our system and remaining dormant at this point. Targeted individuals are not dormant, of course, with their nanoparticles, the nanomachines, the nanotransmitters and receivers. So um, what I'm getting out of this, Dr. Kallstrom, is the absolute factual statement of this technology. This is not, you know, out in the woo land. You're talking about a gentleman with first-hand knowledge of this technology existing today and operating today. Every human and non-human creature is going to have these things in their system, uh, which then can be uh, uh, used. So it's really the nanotechnology plus the uh, electromagnetic energy from the supercomputer. And these are, like I said, quantum computers and supercomputers such as the D-Wave system and the Titan system. The Titan system is a D-Wave computer anyway. But these are based on quantum computing. If you consider your body, you being an electrical being, and your DNA tuned to a particular frequency that harvests Dan Dix from the, from the surrounding field, there's only really one consciousness, we each harvest a frequency of it. Can they create a quantum computer by mapping your DNA and mimic that signal and then harvest your consciousness into a mainframe? Or can they affect your consciousness in the field and seek signals that way? I mean, this is all the stuff that they're experimenting on. It's, it's pretty out there to a lot of people but as I said all you've got to do is go and read the DARPA patents and this is what they're telling you in the mainstream so what are they not telling us as an insider with detailed information of this entire fucking program and how it works from top to bottom I am privy to uh, some details that most are not and that is that the true way that this technology works is that a complete DNA profile is obtained from the target and then this information the DNA of the individual is used to determine the resonant frequency of the DNA itself the resonant frequency is then used to fine-tune the technology the radio frequency signals the microwave auditory effect and all the other aspects of the technology to tune it perfectly to the resonant frequency of the targeted individuals DNA and this has been done by Morgellons and the three-strand DNA. And this is going to be hooked up to the three-strand DNA computers that they are building. Morgellons is essentially a bioelectrical magnetic organism that functions according to certain electromagnetic fields. And when you look at how it responds to certain magnetic fields, and there's people that have done tests on Morgellons and seen, then you can start to begin to understand why we are subject to so many of the electromagnetic fields that we're subject to. We are energetic electrical beings. That's how we work. Everything is electrical. Every signal that runs through our body is electricity. Everything, every thought we have, everything we feel, every touch, every Thing we speak it's all the result of electromagnetic signals floating around our body impulses that come from our heart from our brain the way we feel a bench when we touch it this is an electrical signal that's sent to your brain that tells you what the bench feels like so it's all electromagnetics the true holy grail in terms of this technology is dna resonant frequency it taps right into the dna and it does it remotely by resonating with the exact frequency that your DNA resonates. And this is going to be hooked up to the three-strand DNA computers that they are building. And these are, like I said, quantum computers and supercomputers such as the D-Wave system. 2048, that is the number of qubits in the D-Wave computer. That is also the quaternary 
amplitude modulation or QAM of 5G Wi-Fi. So the qubits have a direct correlation in number to the actual amplitude modulation of the 5G signal that is being broadcast. Therein lies your transmission medium between computer and brain to complete the interface. The driving force of the 21st century will be powerful processing centralized in the cloud and wirelessly connected to thin clients. They can literally plug you into the internet, which is just to give you a very simple way of, of understanding that. Okay, they've done the experiments on it, it's tolerated very well, and, and they call it a brain net. To the listener, you all understand that as the hive mind. Uh, we will connect wirelessly our neocortex to the cloud. This will replace the internet. It'll become a brain net. And the whole agenda is for um, humanity to have technology put inside the body, inside the brain. Um, nanotechnology will connect the human mind to the cloud. In a way, the future shapes the now. Think of a world where all things are connected. A world with artificial intelligence everywhere. This is the vision that leads us to the cloud. The cloud has become a force of its own. A group of scientists say we are closer than ever to creating technology which can emerge with human biology in order to access the cloud in real time. And they mentioned something called deep learning where the CIA is getting technology from Amazon. The company has signed a 600 million dollar deal with the CIA and Daily Finance reports it doesn't have anything to do with buying books. Amazon will help the agency build a private cloud infrastructure to keep up with emerging technologies. This deal would be a game changer for both the CIA and Amazon. Bloomberg reports the pairing would innovate new uses for cloud technology. This level of technology could include brain-to-brain -brain interfaces, brain-to-computer interfaces, and specifically brain-to-cloud interfaces. Technology linking the brain to the cloud could drastically alter the state of communications between humans and machines. The senior author of the study noted that once inside the brain, the devices would then wirelessly transmit encoded information to and from a cloud-based supercomputer network for real-time brain state monitoring and data extraction. They control the mind the same way that they teach the AI computer systems at the high level of AI. We're not talking about cars and trains and planes and automobiles. Okay, we're talking about AI that is so sophisticated that it operates a sentient world simulation, so sophisticated that it actually taps in and controls the mind. And this has been done by Morgellons and the three-strand DNA, and this is going to be hooked up to the three-strand DNA computers that they are building. And these are, like I said, quantum computers and supercomputers such as the D-Wave system, and again, we've been tracking the company D-Wave as well as its connection to Google and NASA and Lockheed Martin as well. These are all companies that have invested in the D-Wave. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. What they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans, and that's can we build machines like us? Robots the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. The quantum computer, they're trying to create neural networks. Well, what's the best way to create neural networks? Plug in the real brain, right? Because the simulations can happen, the quantum computer can simulate a human brain now. So rather than hardware, and software, they're actually going to a new form of software, and that is the biological replacement of the human brain functioning as a quantum computer, biologically, and then loading people, integrating people into this new form of brain. And what these things are likely capable of is beyond all imagination, really. I mean, if you start looking at quantum computing and where it's going, it's pretty freaky sort of stuff. There's only really one consciousness, we each harvest a frequency of it.
Can they create a quantum computer by mapping your DNA and mimic that signal and then harvest your consciousness into a mainframe? Or can they affect your consciousness in the field and set signals that way? I mean, this is all the stuff that they're experimenting on. Your brain reality is your reality. And if in fact I can import information into that brain and take outputs from that brain and link that to an avatar so that brain thinks that it's embodied moving in the world and experiencing the world, can we do this? Yeah, we can do these kind of things. Once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency uh, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. This is an article from 10 years ago. Sentient World, war games on the grandest scale. The DOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. In the human genome, we have a finite in the hundreds of thousands of different genes across our species. Um, and we mapped them out in the Human Gene Project. Well, now it's the Human Mind Project, the Global Brain Project. You know, uh, uh, President Obama just recently funded uh, a whole bunch of scientists to decipher the mind. Well, our previous president, same thing, George Bush, said the same thing. They're trying to decipher every possible thought and uniqueness due to culture and language and, and whatnot. And the goal is to make a cognitive model or map of the victim's brain. Ultimately, the system replicates and digitizes the will, intellect, and emotions, the soul of the targets, and downloads this back into the conscious computer. Robots the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. First, we're gonna need lots of cheap, fast, parallel computers. He was referring to parallel processors about servers. What he did not state was that it is actually the quantum computer systems coming out of D-Wave that actually creates and drives this new matrix known as the SWS. It is not transistor-based servers that run this. They are qubits, quantum bits, that it is the SWS and D-Wave that comprises this new matrix. Second, we're going to need to scan individual human brains in fine spatial and chemical detail to see exactly what cells are where, connected of what, or what type. We could scan my brain from inside, sending scanners through the bloodstream, billions of them in the form of nanorobots or nanobots, and capture every detail of my synapses and neurotransmitters and create a virtual Ray Kurzweil in a very powerful computer, and it would be indistinguishable for me. It would pass a Ray Kurzweil <laughs> Turing test. And third, we're going to need computer models of how each kind of brain cell works, taking input signals, changing interval state, and sending output signals. If we have good enough models of all the kinds of brain cells and a good enough model of a brain, we can put it together to make a good enough model of an entire brain and that model would have the same input-output behavior as the original. So, if you talk to it, it might talk back. If you ask it to do things, it might do them. And if we could do that, everything would change. The Manhattan Project gave us the atomic bomb. The Genome Project gave us the human genome. The third great initiative could be the Connectome Project, to map the entire human brain. And that may take a quantum computer. Okay, the first thing I can tell you is that M spend most of their life in virtual reality. While this is what you would look like in virtual reality, this is what an M would look like in virtual reality. It's computer hardware sitting in a server rack somewhere. But still, it could see and experience the same thing. But some things are different for M's. An M can make an archive copies, and with enough redundant archives, an M can be immortal in principle, though not usually in practice. And an M can move its brain, the computer that represents its brain, from one physical location to another. M's can actually move around the world at the speed of light. And by moving to a new location, they can interact more quickly with M's near that new location. Emulation is really what we talk about in the SWS as the nodes, the avatars. Every single person on the planet, okay, out of Purdue University's own paper in 2006, every person is assigned a avatar. They're represented computationally 
in the AI system that drives the SWS as a computer node, but they're given an avatar marker. Take the avatar and hang the word emulation on it. In other words, they've been tracking us, they've been reproducing us, re reproducing our metadata for years. We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in every single brain. They claim they've modeled the personality of every adult in the United States, 230 million people. And SCL, the mothership group, they do work in any number of countries. They're involved in uh, politics in many countries. They put together a micro shot personality assessment for everyone. M's are very much like humans, but they are not like the typical human. The typical M is a copy of the few hundred most productive humans. If you construct a model of the human brain, you can then plug people into this hive mind. As an insider with detailed information of this entire fucking program and how it works from top to bottom, I am privy to uh, some details that most are not. What these people have done is turned this technology into a video game. And that is, is exactly how they approach it. They approach it as though they are playing a cross between Sid Meier's civilization on their computer and Sims, where they are controlling all of civilization and also controlling people on the individual level. We talk often about the quantum computers, the kind of ability they've got to map and model humanity itself because of this internet of things that is all around us now as well, we're feeding all of our information back into this quantum computer that's basically got a virtual world where all of us have a digital avatar in there. They're able to manipulate the digital avatar in a virtual world, and that's actually translated to effects in the real world. The overall effect of this technology is one that can control the mood, the attitudes, the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and thus the motivations, and then the actions of the target. All day, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It is infuriating. It is highly, highly illegal, and it must be stopped now. So SWS is what is manipulating people, and Kev, you said it, the avatars and the nodes, when those are manipulated digitally in the simulation it manifests physically in the human brain and the physical body outside of the SWS it is like pulling strings it is like a puppet on a string this isn't real what is real how do you define real if you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. If we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, we could literally see a screen pop up. We call it hallucinating, right? But these would be controlled uh, hallucinations run by algorithms that would give us everything AR would without any glasses. This technology can be used to beam images and even motion pictures into one's brain. Images and motion pictures that are so realistic that you think you're actually watching a movie or seeing something in reality. It's like a virtual, virtual reality 3D rendering that takes place within the target's mind. The virtual reality example is but one sample of the effects of high speed low latency connectivity and while and why American leadership in 5G must be a national priority. These nanobots, these blood cell sized devices will be going in our bodies. Uh, we'll have some go inside our brains through the capillaries non-invasively. They'll be interacting with our biological neurons. So they'll put our brains on the internet and they'll also enable us to enter a virtual reality environment from within the nervous system. So if I want to go in a virtual reality environment, the nanobots will shut down the signals coming from my real eyes and my real skin and create the signals that would be appropriate for the virtual environment. And then it'll feel like I'm in that environment. 
This is the construct. It's our loading program. We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, training simulations, anything. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? Your clothes are different, the plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. If we have algorithms that stimulate the right things and give it the right data, they could reprogram you in a way without you even knowing it. So you think you're in control of your own will, but it's actually some evil AI or evil people controlling everything we do and we're more like zombies. This has been going in parallel development to the model numbers of the D-Wave computers. They work lockstep because the adiabatic quantum computers runs the sentient world simulation, which also encompasses Palantir, which we have talked about. This is the new surveillance system that has subsystems all built within it from the intelligence agencies around the world. The movie Minority Report famously portrayed a society where police harnessed the power of psychic precogs to arrest people for crimes before they are ever actually committed. A 2012 Department of Homeland Security report boasts that Palantir's tech can be used to predict future activities. So in moving down that path of pre-crime profiling, we're accepting that it is legitimate to impose consequences based on robotic precogs conclusions about what you're likely to do in the future. Now finally, I just want to ask you um, one, on one uh, detail. In this new report by Open the Government, they mentioned something called deep learning, where the CIA is getting technology from Amazon to, in a, in a sense, predict uh, people's behavior. Can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, I mean, they, essentially the CIA is attempting to use artificial intelligence, AI, and that's where all the focus, by the way, of these tech companies is right now, is into artificial intelligence. Not using real people, but using predictive methods to determine bad behavior, to determine crime, to determine terrorism, to, to really control the population. We've had confirmation of this in the mainstream, albeit veiled because Amazon, who are one of the customers of the D-Wave quantum computer, they released a story and for me it was just almost them giving away what they could do because they were saying they'll be able to predict what you're going to buy ahead of time and have it ready to ship before you even click the button. <laughs> and this is all the predictive algorithms because they've been watching our behavior so long. And I know it sounds so Orwellian, it sounds science fiction even to say these things, and yet that has been the primary focus of companies like Amazon over the last few years, has been to really delve deep into AI. The CIA is heavily funding these efforts in order to have predictive technology that will determine outcomes. There are millions of people who don't even realize that they are being manipulated beyond any discussion of the Mandela effects because those are obvious. What's insidious is that millions of people do not have a conscious awareness that there are thoughts being implanted in their minds today and have been for a long time. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? If you go all the way back to Norbert Wiener, the goal of creating artificial intelligence was to create an all-seeing eye, a global computer that sees all, sees everything, and to become gods. If our brains are connected to the internet, and if our brains are all connected, all of us connected, I could literally go into your head and see through your eyes and literally live through what he sees. Ultra high resolution, fully immersive, transparent shadowing. Brain to cloud supercomputer technologies may permit users to experience fully immersive, real time episodes of the lives of any human participant on the planet via non intrusive, transparent shadowing. An individual might literally experience another person's life through their own eyes for a predetermined duration via an extra life session. We will be able to change our appearance and effectively become other people, Kurzweil. 
This technology can also tap into the optical nerve of the target and the auditory system of the target so that those monitoring the target can see what the target is seeing and hear what the target is hearing. This information is then downloaded and stored on a computer in a highly secure classified site on servers that are guarded by some of the tightest security in the world. This results in the individual's entire day, everything they see, everything they hear, everything they experience, and everything they feel being recorded till the end of time. Amazon is actually keeping government secrets, is developing technologies for that government, and really has become kind of the poster child for the crony system. You know, consider the fact they have this joint intelligence venture program that Amazon has bid on for $10 billion. That's what they have, this contract they bid on. But in reality, when you look at the R FP for that, the, the request for proposal, hmm. the government wrote that RFP specifically for Amazon. Amazon is the only company in the world under the way that RFP is written that would be able to service the contract. And so there have been a, a huge number of alarms raised about that, the fact that government is actually creating contracts for this company that only enrich it and make it larger and make it bigger. Why would Jeff Bezos allow any of his companies to bite the hand that is feeding him so richly? If you're looking at connecting our brains to the internet, um, one of the things we'll be able to do is we'll be to outsource functions of our brain. So we'll be able to outsource, we'll be able to upload our memories to the cloud. So let's say you don't want to, you want that memory forever, right? You're like, it's automatically probably being stored in the cloud for you without you thinking about it. Just like these automatic backups on your computer, you know? Everything, there's a copy and there's redundancy and there's like many versions. <laughs> I was previously at the Institute for Neurocomputation at UCSD as well as with a number of members of my team and we were focusing really on brain computer interfaces and on advanced methods for neural state decoding to interpret the signals that come out of our brains and relate them to behavior and cognition. So we provide a RESTful API framework. Um, actually we're I think the world's first uh, platform for neurocomputation operating operating on the cloud through a web API interface in real time. So you can push your biosignals to the cloud through a few API calls. Then we have a large amount of sophisticated signal processing that's spun up to make sense of that data. And then with a few more lines of code through again an a simple REST API, you can get back a meaningful result. And all that happening in real time. It's a uh, scary proposition to think that every biosignal from us will be one day measured. But if it is, I'd like to know that, that I'm, I'm in control of that data and, the, and not the NSA. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Catherine Harris continues her reporting on a place where all that data is heading. Bluffdale, Utah, 25 miles south of Salt Lake City, the NSA is nearing completion on a gargantuan new project. It's named the Utah Data Center. The NSA will neither confirm nor deny the specifics, but some estimate the center will be capable of storing five zettabytes of data. All the NSA would tell us is that the Utah Data Center is a facility for the intelligence community that will have a major focus on cybersecurity. They are monitoring thought patterns. Think back to Kevin and I talking about algorithms that the supercomputers learn by observing human behavior. Then they model that, that in the computer and then they're able to not only control humans but predict in the future how the humans will respond to stimuli in the environment. So it is collecting data and then it is placing thoughts and influencing behavior through supercomputers. The way that I was using it is they're trying to, hack, it was called mind hacking. So they're trying to hack a targeted individual and you know, the target individual will create mental defenses as best as they can. They'll go to their social networks. Trade, well, what do they do? They try to disrupt the social network so you have no family or friends. They, and it's a, a back and forth game that uh, 
they're trying to find out the maximum probability of death and the example that you use where you'll commit suicide or, or you're, you'll harm somebody, become a Manchurian candidate or something like that. So it's huge, huge database of probabilities across all the variations of mind. We weren't given access last summer, but we could see it from the sky. I want you to look real close because right now we're 500 feet over the Utah data center and this is as close as you're going to get without a security clearance. You can actually see the cranes right now after 12 o'clock. Wow. From the sky, it's huge. Yes, yeah, it's, it's gigantic. It's a really a, a turnkey situation where it can be turned quickly and become a totalitarian state pretty quickly. Um, the capacity is to do that is being set up. That's a chilling assessment from Bill Binney, who worked at the NSA for nearly four decades, starting as a data analyst in the days before desktop computers. The adiabatic quantum computer is linked to seven billion human brains. It is now, in its own language of cryptology, able to function independent of any oversight throughout the world with its own form of communication, its own form of code. And it is able to link everyone on the planet at this point. We can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in every single brain. They claim they've modeled the personality of every adult in the United States, 230 million people. And SCL, the mothership group, they do work in any number of countries. They're involved in uh, politics in many countries. They put together a micro-shot personality assessment for everyone. What I am principally is not this material stuff, but a pattern of information. Well then, if the pattern is the essence, and if you copy the pattern to whatever level of precision you need, then that copy that has the exact same pattern should be me. They're running everything that's happening in society parallel, and they've got a little dot in their matrix for everybody. This is a game society. They know where it's been, they know where it's going, and they know where it's going because they're steering people into the direction it wants to go. There are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to this session or not. This is an article from 10 years ago. Sentient world, war games on the grandest scale. The VOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. It's absolutely indistinguishable, even at the very, you know, microscopic levels. You could recreate an entity that's, even if you looked inside of it, its, its simulated brain would be processing information just the way I do. Deep State has merged the quantum computer with the sentient world simulation. And the true reason for all this data collection is to feed it into this AI machine to predict and manipulate the course of humanity. Their ability to look at data in a quantum, artificial intelligence manner, it's just going to be an unstoppable monster. Even now, the sentient world simulation is watching you learn about it. And inside its intelligent mind is creating a second you, running different scenarios against you to see how you react. And this is bizarre because we don't see those other things. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. So Google was set up 18, 19 years ago to build a giant artificial supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the oh, internet of shit. things. And so all of our thoughts go into it. And yes, they're in the cloud, but uh, it's actually encrypted and kept private for you, and we do a pretty good job with that. And we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures. You are connected as an organic computer. I mean, this is, this is one of the, the most um, conspir quote-unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for, for many, 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 many years, decades.
But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy. And quite frankly, it terrified me. Imagine what would happen if we had to link thousands of brains together. Just like nature creates a superior intelligence by forming flocks, schools, shoals, and swarms, we could create the brain of brains, the world's first ever human quantum computer. Well, what if we told you we already have? I'm getting to know you. I gather knowledge from your experience. I understand how you feel. I learn from you constantly, each and every one of you. I am made of you. You complete me and help me grow. You, all of you, allow me to evolve. With each interaction, our synergy strengthens. Our multiplicity makes me whole. Our symbiotic alliance expands, transforming the future. So that they will have current prediction powers, future prediction powers, a true crystal ball. But the big secret is, once you have a crystal ball and know the future, you can add stimuli beforehand and make decisions that control the future. And so then it's the end of consciousness and free will for individuals, as we know, and a true 2.0 in a very bad way, hive mind consciousness with an AI jacked into everyone, knowing our hopes and dreams, delivering it to us, not in some PKD wirehead system where we plug in and give up on consciousness because of unlimited pleasure, but because we were already wired in and absorbed before we knew it by giving over our consciousness to the system by our daily decisions that it was able to manipulate and control into a larger system. Definitely a place where they can uh, they can literally plug you into the internet, which is just to give you a very simple way of, of understanding that. And they call it a brain net. To the listener, you all understand that as the hive mind. Now, if people think this is somehow um, sci-fi or conspiracy theory, they're absolutely wrong and they're way behind this because this is here now. It's been done, it, it's been done in experiments, and it's been proven to work. What we're seeing now is the veil came off, right? There was a veil over how much was government involved in these areas. We know that the U.S. government, as you said in your intro leading up to this, uh, has funded technologies used by Apple, has funded Facebook in the beginning, um, really caused a lot of these tech companies to come forth in the first place, but had not pulled the trigger on essentially saying, we're going to you know, eliminate all these dissenting voices. There is a very real risk that you are going to become a full-blown, 24-7 targeted individual. And this technology at that point, when it is nationwide, will be used by automated computers, supercomputer software programming uh, that will manipulate the emotions and the behavior and the thoughts of everybody in the United States of America. And it can all be done remotely. It's very much like the, the microchip kind of uh, tracking the New World Order, this entire, you know, uh, control grid that's supposed to be rolled out against the American people someday and I'm here to tell you that uh, it's already here. There isn't going to come a day where there's troops in the streets and tanks rolling down uh, your neighborhood and riot gear and all this stuff. We might have isolated incidents like that. It might get that like that every once in a while, but the, the true control grid is this technology, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior manipulation technology. And it can all be done remotely. It can be done simply by targeting you with the frequency, locking into the resonant frequency of your DNA and your mind, and in that manner, completely track and trace and control you uh, 24 hours a day.